Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Wendy, can you hear me? Yeah, I just want to check if anyone can hear my voice. Okay, okay. Um, I'll start my presentation for today. Um, I have been allocated 30 minutes for my presentation and I will try to complete um, within 30 minutes so I can let you go. Um, today I'm going to talk about the, um, uh, the practical guidance um, for k in 2019. Um, well, this is the timeline or history of carriage, and I'm not going to go through in details. I just wanted to tell you that the um, amend, amended carriage has been implemented on January 2019, which is only less than three months ago. And this table is the comparison between the old Toxic Chemicals Control Act, um, previous k -reach and the amended k -reach with European REACH. The big change with the amended k -reach is that the um, annual report has been deleted from the regulation. Now we have pre-registration for all existing chemicals above one ton, um, which needs to be filed in before the end of June 2019. Now we have something called new chemical notification for below 100 kilograms um, per year. And we now are going to have a list of priority substances. And if you have um, more than 0.1% and more than one ton of any priority substance in your product, you will have to submit the product notification. Okay, and also the, um, the products um, subject to product notification will also include articles with amendment. Okay, this is the timetable for the amended carriage. It has been implemented in January 2019. The pre-registration um, phase is for six months until the end of June this year. And depending on the tonnage and the toxicity of your chemical substances, you have the extended deadlines, for example, above 1,000 ton and um, above one ton of CML substances are due 2021, 100 to 1000 is due 2024, 10 to 100 is due 2027, and 1 to 10 is due 2030. Um, if you don't complete your pre-registrations within six months from the enforcement, you will not get the um, extended deadline and you will have to complete the registration before you can continue to manufacture or import in Korea. And from the, also with the um, amendment, and you can, um, you have to notify your substances which has been exempted under Toxic Chemical Control Act and also your existing chemical, existing polymers, which satisfy the um, exemption, PLC exemption criteria can be exempted from registrations. Um, okay, I'll talk more about this in later slide. And this is um, sort of what I'm gonna talk about today. And this is what I think is what is necessary for you to do and what I think is necessary for you to do. And um, today I'm going to talk about pre-registrations, PLC exemptions, um, a little bit on intermediates, new chemical substances and 
um, data cap analysis um, for the um, joint registrations of amended carriage. Okay. Um, starting with pre-registration, um, compared to Europe, you will also have to submit the um, classification and labeling of your chemical substance. You will also have to submit uses and exposure information and also the list of importers um, whose import your chemical substance is. And this is not going to be an easy job and quick as it was in UREACH because you will have to collect uses and exposure inform information from your downstream users um, so you can add them into your um, pre-registration dossier. And um, now we only have three and a half months left. Um, so strongly recommended to start communicating within your supply chain ASAP on to collect uses and exposures. And in regards to the classification labeling, you are recommended to submit um, with what you know based on the um, available information, um, but they might not be based on scientific evidence. And um, this is what I'm going to talk a little bit more of, about um, with the um, DGA. Okay. And I'm going to um, explain a little bit about users and information required for the um, pre-registration. Um, when you submit the pre, when you um, prepare the information required for the pre-registration, you will have to um, um, collect the use information, how your substances are used by, used by your downstream users in Korea. And you will have to choose um, from the use categories or 55 uses. And for each use, you have to from, uh, provide detailed explanations for industrial use as well as consumer use, if available. And again, this is the most time consuming part to collect information from the supply chain. And most of the time, we find that the downstream users are not familiar with the use category um, system. So the information they provide is are not always um, the way we want it to be. So we can use it to submit pre-registration. Um, so if you are collect, if you are trying to collect yourself, um, you should always uh, you should also be aware and familiar with the um, use categories and how the information is to be collected so um, you know which information are to be collected. Uh, also for the importer information, um, you will have to provide those information so we can um, submit this information in the um, pre-registration dossier as well as other dossier which requires important information. We need the um, company name, representative's name, address, personal charge, and contact number for the personal charge, business registration number, and the origin of import. Um, business registration certificate is not necessary, but uh, it helps because when we type in, we have to type in this information into the um, system. And with the um, certificate, we can verify that what we are typing in is the correct information. And we believe that the information we put in for the importers are going to be cross-checked with the um, customs, um, with the real imports by the customs. And so if you have missed an, an importer in your um, dossier, this importer might not be able to create a custom if the customs find out that your dossier has not listed that importer in their dossier. It's, it's, um, you can always um, update your dossier with importers at any time. Okay. Right. okay, now with the um, polymer exemptions, 
Uh, you, we have amended carriage as um, new uh, polymer exemption criteria. Um, the number average molecular weight conditions and the um, molecular weight conditions are the same as before, but the um, additional um, condition for molecular average um, number average molecular weight between 1,000 and 10,000 has changed. Previously, we looked into the uh, monomers of the polymer, which are more than uh, um, 2%. Uh, whereas now, instead of looking into monomers, we are looking at the um, residual monomers. And if we have any monomers which are hazardous chemical substances or priority substances, which will be um, announced later this year and in 2021, all new chemicals. And if any of those resides after the polymerization process um, in polymer above 0.1%, then you will not be able to um, apply for the exemption. And if you apply for the exemption while having um, one of those substances as monomer in your polymer, you will probably get requested to submit the um, residual monomer analysis data to prove that your monomer, which is um, hazardous chemical substance, priority substance or new chemical substance, is not with the polymer as residual monomer above 0.1%. And the um, Definition of monomer under k -rich is a little bit different to e -rich. Um e -rich, we looked at the um, starting monomers when we, are talk when we talk about polymers. But for k -rich, um the monomers actually mean the, um, the monomer which stays um, as part of the um, monomer chain in the um, polymer, manufactured polymer. Um, so there's a little difference when it comes to monomer, and when we talk about the residual monomer, that is the monomer on the carriage which resides after the polymerization. polymerization. And PS, priority substance, will be um, enforced. First list will be enforced from July 2021, and second will be enforced from 2020. Uh, sorry, first will be 2019, second will be 2021. And um, this is, these are the information required for the um, PLC exemptions, registering um, information, polymer information, um, and data, uses and exposure like we had in the um, um, pre-registration on also the um, importer information also we saw in pre-registration. Okay, and for the polymer information, we need the um, polymer name, cast number if available, um, product name containing the polymer, purity of the polymer, and um, tonnage of the um, expected importing tonnage, um, monomer, list of monomers, um, names, cast number, and percentage are required. We need to submit molecular structure. And this data set, information set, will be um, required for all other polymer-related applications. And for the data requirements, we will have to submit GPC report satisfying the um, authority's quality standard with raw data. And we need to submit the um, polymer identification. And when, when we talk about identification, uh, mainly we use ECHA examination site or STM search, but for polymer, um, e reach is not, um, does, uh, polymer is not subject to e reach, so we usually use the um, STM search for the polymer identification. And data on residual monomers and also the monomer information, um, it's a declaration signed by the registrant on the, um, the list of monomers. Okay. And sometimes we find the actual cast number of the polymer that registrant is trying to register. Okay. Okay, we all now also have intermediates um, like Europe. 
now we have non-isolated intermediates, on-site isolated intermediates, um, transported isolated intermediates. Non-isolated intermediates are exempted, which you will have to apply for exemption. On-site isolated intermediates are exempted if it is under strictly controlled conditions, and it has to. You have to apply for the exemption. Transported isolated intermediates are not exempted. They are subject to registrations. Um, but unfortunately, um, the imported chemicals are not considered as intermediate. So if you are importing um, substance which is used like intermediates, you still have to comply as a um, normal substance. And for the exemptions, um, the authority will come out to inspect whether it is actually used as intermediates or used under the um, strictly controlled condition. And you might want to pre-register to buy time for the exemptions. And I also forgot to mention that in Korea, the existing polymers which may, subject, may be subject to exemptions the general approach in Korea is that the, um, they will submit the pre-registration anyway to buy time for the um, to prepare the um, exemptions for the polymers. Now we have a little more than three months left until the end of June, and we don't we don't think we have enough time to complete the PLC exemptions because one we have to review the. Um, Polymers. Two, we have to prepare the data required for the polymer exemptions. Three, we'll have to go through the exemption process. And um, this will probably take more than three and a half months and go over six, uh, um, June. Um, so, yeah. And this is the data requirement for the intermediates. And the transported isolated intermediates. The data requirements quite small. The maximum data you have to submit is for over 1,000 tons, and that will be equivalent to one to 10 ton data requirements for normal registrations. Okay, we now have um, low volume notifications. Um, information required for the notification is identical to previous key reach. Um, but the reason why they came up with this um, new concept of low volume notification is to avoid um, the follow-up obligations after the completion of registration, uh, completion of the submission of the registration. Um, by the regulation, the assessing um, authorities are also obliged to assess the applications and if necessary, they have to request the registrant to submit necessary data required for the assessment by the regulation. And the registrants who are requested to submit have to have to submit the um, requested data for the registration. And this happened for those small, little, very small volume registrations. Like maybe we had, we once had a client who were registering 40 grams per year. And then because it was used in a detergent as a colorant, also it had to um, request Opiotox data and aims um, to assess 40 grams per year substance and that was quite um, a burden for industry where they had to produce data to submit for very small amount of imports. So they came up with the notifications uh, which now does not have obligations for the authority and the um, industry to follow up to the work after the um, completion of submission. Um, but the authority will still keep their eyes on the market and if they see any possible um, risk of using the um, notified substance um, in the market, then they may start the um, assessment process in which they may request for additional data to assess or evaluate the chemical substance. And 
after the completion of notification, if you go over 100 kilograms, you will have to submit the um, 0 0.1 to 1 registrations. And, after, and also the um, notification will have to be maintained. For example, um, you'll have to update your importers if you have new importers and so on. Information required, you see on the slide, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, they have been explained in previous slides. Okay, now 0 0.1 to 1 ton registration. Um, with previous K reach, um, 0 0.1 to 1 ton, the implementation of 0 0.1 to 1 ton registration was um, scheduled in 2020, but as the amended carriage um, shifted 0 0.1 below 100 kilograms to notification, they had to bring the um, 0 0.1 to 1 ton registration um, up front so they can regulate this tonnage band. And also with the um, Plan to implement, plan to um, enforce from 2020. Um, authority also gave the um, data reduction for those twenty for this tonnage band from 0 0.1 to 1, where you did not have to submit any data for the registrations. And even though they brought up the um, 0 0.1 to 1 ton registration to 2019, this data reduction until 2000. 20 is still valid. So if you submit 0 0.1 to 1 ton registration in 2019, you still don't have to submit the um, data requirement, which are nine endpoints. Um, so if you have any substances you plan to import into Korea, which is between 0 0.1 to 1 ton, it would be a good idea to complete the registration in 2019. And if you are going to register new substance between 0 0.1 to 1, you will also have to register under k reach, sorry, kosha. And for this tonnage band under kosha, you will need to submit Talk data. So at the end, if you are going to, if you have a new substance built between 0 0.1 to 1, you can complete your registration for k reach and kosha with Talk data only, but after 2020, it will be nine end points. And these are the information required for the 0 0.1 to 1 ton registrations. And you will also have to submit the um, guidance on safe use of your chemical substance, which you need to, um, the most of this information is, can be found in the um, MSDS of this substance. Okay, um, for your reference, Okitox data costs around 2.5 thousand to 3 thousand, depending on the lab you are using. And from 2020, if you complete the registration under Cambridge, uh, it will automatic, automatically acknowledge as complete, completed under Kosha, so you won't have to submit the um, dossier into Kosha anymore. Okay, um, registration for over one ton for new chemical substances. Um, information required is same. Data requirements are based on your tonnage band. And for the CSR, and if you, um, CSR requirement for 2019 is above 20 tons, whereas the CSR requirement for two, from 2020 is above 10 tons. So if you have a substance in your land which you are planning to register between 10 and 100, and if you have data available in your hand, and then it will be also a good idea to complete the registration in 2019 or below um, 20, but above 10, complete the registration for the 20 span between 10 to 100. Mm.
And also for the BCM um, registration of existing chemicals, um, authority has come up with a policy to reduce burdens for the industry. And they came up with the um, classification category, um, non-classified, low classified in general. This is my translation. You might see different terminology in different texts. Um, so the, you can see the conditions, uh, conditions on the slide. Um, so if your substance is not classified at all or only classified with um, chronic or toxicity category three or four, then you are classified as none. If you are only classified with those in the cell, then you are classified with low. Otherwise, it's all general. And the, um, the data requirement will be 15 endpoints for the non, up to 33 for low classified and full data package, which is up to 47 for general. And this is the um, data requirement for general substances up to 47 endpoints. This is for the non-classified. Um, so basically, regardless of the tonnage band, you submit the data requirement equivalent to one to 10 tons. And because these are the only endpoints you are going to submit, you will not have to write a CSR and you will not be able to write CSR with those data anyway. And this is low classified and it's more than non-classified, but still less than um, general substances, um, which you don't have to pay the ecotox data for above 100 tons. And for the registration of new polymer, um, okay, well, it's similar to the um, new chemical substances. Um, for the 0 0.1 to 1 ton, you will have the um, benefit of data reduction. And also for the um, CSR, is for, the, for below 20 tons per year, you will have the um, CSR benefit. And also for the polymer, um, if, if you have existing polymer and if it satisfies non-classified, you will be benefited from the um, data reduction policy. And if it is, if your polymer is new or other than non-classified, you will um, be subject to the general data requirements for polymer, which is different to data requirements for the chemical shape. Okay. These are the data requirements. Um, for above 1,000 tons, if your existing polymer is non-classified, you will have no additional data to be submitted for above 1,000 tons. But if it is not non-classified or new, you have the um, additional data to submit. Um, it is either for the, for the non-classified above 1,000 tons is equivalent to the um, general data requirement for one to 10 tons. And for other um, polymers and new polymers above 1,000 tons is equivalent to 10 to 100 ton data requirements. And for the joint registrations, um, at the end of the um, pre-registration, and you will be um, in a shift of the same substance, and you will have to consider how you are going to um, participate in the joint registration activities. And you might want to consider a few things, um, for example, like um, your tonnage band. If your tonnage band is quite high, above 1,000 ton, you might want to participate as active or lead registrant. If you have to write CSR, and if you have quite a unique uses and exposure that no one else is um, using, that you might want to participate as active or passive, 
that only participating the um, risk assessment activity if the um, consortium allows. So your uses are also assessed um, while the um, whole shift is conducting the um, risk assessment for whole uses. And if there are a few companies are sensitive with classification, classification and labeling, um, some companies want to have um, harmonized or unified classifications and labels up, um, across the world um, for their management purposes. So if you want to um, keep your classification as you want to, you might want to um, join the consortium to raise your voice um, to have the classification as you need. Okay, once, um, once you have decided how you want to participate, a consortium will be formed. And most of the time, 30% of PC um, has outsourced the um, consortium management and technical works to the consultants in Korea. And this is how it's going to look. Um, the consortium will work on the um, substance identification, CJ, data preparation, dossier, CSR, and also the um, submission, which will be outsourced um, to consultants most of the time. And the money will be paid upfront by the consortium. Passive will pay later, as in the form of letter of access to join the um, joint registration. Lead registrant and active registrant um, will pay the most upfront. These are the um, types of expenses um, you will face as you um, experience the um, um, joint registration situations. Um, for CSR, um, even if you're passive, if you have to write on, you might want to uh, participate in the um, cost sharing of the risk assessment so you are not left out at the end of the um, submission, at the end of the um, preparations. Um, and what we found out with PC is that the um, lead registrant um, pay the least and but also have um, made their inputs with their human resources um, the most, and whereas passive um, pay the most, um, but have spent the least with their human resources and active members were somewhere in between. Okay, this is after the um, lead registration. Even if you have completed your registration, the consortium will have to be in operation um, because there will be other registrants with um, lower tonnage band and you have to be ready to sell your um, LOA to passive members um, at lower tonnage band um, so they can join the joint registrations. Um, so for the lead registrants, they pay the least, but they will have to um, keep their eyes on and keep their hands on the consortium to get it maintained until 2030. So those will submit 10 ton, 1 to 10 ton registrations. It will be a burden for them too. Okay, I, I want to um, add one slide on DGA, and I think DGA for the um, amended carriage will be more important than it was in PC or Europe because um, for 1,000 and over twin registrations, we only have 2.5 years. Um, and um, the data gap analysis um, will be um, the, um, the result of data cap analysis will be the result of the, uh, I'm sorry, will be the strategy and plan to prepare your joint registrations. And it will be the, um, we'll start with the um, finalizing your data requirements 
And if you have substances, um, I, I know, but and the um, data requirement will be based on the um, classifying labeling because you, if you have um, non classified or low classified um, substances, you will have prepared less um, endpoints for the registration. And when you look at the CNL classification, you will probably refer to the um, classification that you have submitted in your pre registration. And when you submit your pre-registration, you will review your classifications for your substance. And you will probably refer to ECHA or classifications in other countries or COSHA, which is also has, um, which also could be used as a reference to check your classifications. And Okay, but when it comes to the scientific evidence, um, there is a question whether that classification will be equivalent to the data that you will be submitting at the end. Um, for what if a substance A was not registered in the European reach and it is not classified in any other country and no one has data to classify the substance? then you will probably have no information on classification of that substance in your hand. Then you will probably want to submit your pre-registration and work on the um, data cap analysis based on no information at all, which means you probably have to start as non-classified, which is then, which then you will start preparing 15 endpoints for the registration. Um, for non-classified, and also you will think you have not to write, um, you won't have to write CSR because it's non-classified. But what if, so you start your testing and you, it is possible that you may find that one of your conducted tests indicate that your substance is not actually non-classified, but is general. Um, categorized, which means you will have to prepare a full package of the 47 endpoints, then you may not have, you may have probably one to 1.5 years left until the deadline. Then you suddenly realize that um, you won't have enough time to conduct additional 32 data, or up to 32 data. And what if A was classified in other countries um, with no classifications, but it is not certain that they are based on the scientific evidence. Even if they are, um, the actual test results, the test data you submit might have different results. Um, what I'm trying to say is if you think you have a um, substance which is categorized as non-classified or low-classified, um, you should build up the strategy to have time to review your um, classification category so that you will have enough time to adapt the change of your category to complete the um, uh, registration for above 1,000 ton within 2.5 years. So data cap analysis will be um, more important than before. And also, if you are if you have a substance above 1,000 ton and you are sure that you are going to register, then it could be a good idea to send an email to the data holders of. Um, the existing um, the, um, data holders, um, you can to remind them that they will be contacted um, to buy data uh, once the consortium for this substance on the key reach has been formed. And you can also ask them to think or even start discuss about whether they want to sell their data. And if they do, um, they might want to start discussion on the, um, the cost of data they want to share for K-Reach.
and I have a few other issues. Um, um, BPR, um, we get questions often on this um, BPR. If you are um, importing active substance, it's not subject to carriage. If the active substance is not listed on the um, existing chemical list, and is new chemical in Korea, you still do not have to register under carriage. If you are importing biocidal product, you are import you are not importing active substance, but you are importing biocidal product. So you are subject to the obligations for the biocidal product, not active substances. So, all right, and for the um, other chemical substances um, in the biocidal product, which are not active substances, are not also also not subject to carriage. So, if you have, um, let's say, um, an active substance and substance B and C, and B and C are normal chemicals, but they are in biocidal product, so B and C does not require to be pre-registered or registered. Okay. Right. And fair, transparent, and non-discriminatory arm. Um, okay. This was quite emphasized in Europe when it came to the um, cost sharing or for the um, joint registration in Europe. And this is also, I believe, was emphasized in Korea. And I think it is a subjective matter. You can't say if someone is fair or not, or transparent or not. I think it's more of how transparent they were. And for Korea, compared to Europe, the transparency of Korea was a little bit less than Europe. And what happened with PC for some consortium was that um, they weren't transparent enough, and the passive members um, could not tell whether they were treated fairly or not um, with the um, LOA as part of the cost sharing. So um, there are, so what's going to happen, what's expected to see with the um, joint registration for amended carriage is that yeah, there will be more companies who is willing to participate as active um, members in the consortium, and this will probably grow the sizes of the consortia, and which will also lead, which will also lengthen the time required for a consortium to come to an agreement because the sizes are bigger, and it will definitely influence the preparation. Um, preparation of the joint registration, especially for above 1,000 tons, which we only have 2.5 years. Um, mm. Well, it's good to see the industry are now more active to participate, but um, is it effective? Um, I'm not, I don't know. Okay. We now have product notifications for the consumer products over containing PS over 0.1% and one ton per year. And we see that the um, previously article form was mentioned in the provision that they are not subject to the um, product notification. But now that exemption clause has been removed and we have consulted the inquired authority and they replied yes to articles um, to products in article forms and they are going to be subject to product notification if they contain um, priority substances over 0 0.1 percent and one ton over one ton per year um, the, um, first list will be enforced from July 2019, and second list will be enforced from July 2021. And I think this is the end of 
my presentation. Thank you. Okay, how do I use this? Okay, I think we have some questions. Let me see if I can. Okay, um, there was a question. Um, okay, well, well, the exemption criteria of all PLC exemptions and intermediate exemptions can be applied to the new chemicals as well. So they can be exempted even if they are not listed on KCL or does not have K number. And also both active and non-active substances in biocidal products are not subject to K reach. And um, yes, whatever is in biocidal products are not subject to K reach. So you don't have to submit pre-registrations. But there is a condition that the um, Biocidal product that has been authorized and these chemical substances in biocidal products which are authorized are not subject to carriage. And um, if you have pre notified the active substances, if someone has pre notified the active substances used in your biocidal product, then you will have the um, the um, extended deadline. Um, so yes, yeah, they are subject to carriage. Okay, um, I can send you my presentation file. And the um, um, the um, English version of k -Rich has been published a few days ago. Um, I can send you what's been published. If you um, send me the, your email, I can reply in you. Hey, and I was just told that the um, English version they published has been removed. <laughs> Sorry, so I'll be able to say thank you. There will be um, corrections to it. Okay, I'll send in Korean version. Um, okay, thank you for the thank you for listening today. Um, Yep, if you have any questions, you can always send me emails. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day. Bye.